Welcome back for another video. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the fish that I have in my aquaponic system. Well, specifically the fish that require warmer water, which is tilapia and the uh, placostomus that I have in my system. Because basically it's getting too cold for them right now. The temperature in my aquaponic system is below 60. And ideally you want it higher for the tilapia. Later on, I might try to see if they'll survive throughout the winter just in the overall temperature of the aquaponic system. But right now I don't want to lose these ones since I've had them for a bit and the plan is to probably breed them later on if I do have males and females. But that's pretty much what I'm gonna be showing you in this video. It's what I am going to do to ensure that they survive throughout the winter in my aquaponic system. So in my aquaponic system, I have a few types of fish which are segregated in different tanks. So the benefit of having these different tanks is that I can basically shut off one if I need it or do something on one which I don't wanna do on another. So I'll be focusing basically on this system right here or this tank right here, which is where I have my tilapia and the plecos that I had in this tank and that tank. So I just move them over here so I can focus on this one since other fish will be fine throughout the winter. So I do have bluegill over there, bluegill over there, some catfish over there, and then some red ear sunfish over here. So what I'll be showing is this tank right here. Kind of see down there. There's two plecos in here that I originally had one in here and one in there just for the algae and then i have all the tilapia in here where the plecos go there's one pleco down there you kind of make it out and then there's a bigger one right there it's kind of a glare there you go and you got the tilapia some good sized ones in there a mixture of red Mozambique and the blue tilapia. There's the other pleco down there. But basically it is getting too cold for them in here. So I have two options or one option, well, I guess two options. I can either move them into my room, which I did last winter, or I can leave them out here and just add a heater in this tank, which is what I'm gonna do right now since I don't have really a tank set up in my room. The one I had last time I sold. I can show you the ones that I'm planning to set up in my room, which you can see right now. It's kind of weird lighting in here, but here's one of the tanks that I have in here. This one is, I don't know, 300 gallons, something like that. But I haven't really set it up yet because I'm thinking whether or not I wanna drill a hole through it to set up the plumbing through the bottom, which would be better, but we'll see. So this is the one of the tanks that I have in here that would be used for basically tilapia and growing fish in here. And then the other one I have, which is not in the room yet, which is this tank right here. This one is also 300 gallons. Well, this one, I think it's 300 gallons. Other one in the room might be like 200 something because of the, the built-in filter it has on the back, which I wish wasn't there. So I don't really need it. But basically this tank is gonna go in the room as well. I wanna hook them up both together into one filtration. So that's what I pretty much have to think about. But this one, I don't have in the room yet. Had some water in it since it rained. Is because I have to clean it up and then I do have to fix this spot right here. I gotta reseal that and then, well not really reseal it, glue it together and then put a piece on top to reinforce it. But this one already has holes going through the bottom, which I may or may not use. So we're still going, I'm still going through the different ideas, but this is a, a good size tank as well as the one on the inside which would be good for the tilapia and so forth so putting the fish in my room in those aquariums is one option which will be nice which is a plan that i do have for later on i just have to take more time to set it up so as i mentioned the simplest option is to keep them in this tank right here so what i'll be basically doing to keep them in here since it is being cold i'm going to this pipe right here is where the water is coming into this tank so when i put a heater in here if I just stick the heater I have in here, it's not gonna be able to heat the whole system because the whole system is maybe, what, 3,000 plus gallons of water in here. So the 800 watt heater, which I have right here, is not gonna be enough for that. I can post a link to the description in the description of this heater where I got it from. It's either Amazon or somewhere else, I'll post it on there. It also needs a controller. But otherwise, yeah, so to stick that heater in here, it's not gonna be enough for the whole system. And if I have heating for the whole system, that's gonna be quite a bit of electricity. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be cutting this pipe, putting a clear piece right here so I can see the flow, the flow that is coming in here. I do wanna do that on all of these later on. I just need to collect the material basically. But the plan for 
doing that on this one is so I, I can see the flow and then I can reduce the flow to a certain amount so that the water's coming in here slowly, slow enough, which is gonna be giving them fresh water, but it's not gonna be coming too fast so that the water will stay warm. So the heater will I will have right down there where that pipe is and then that will be able to heat the water that's coming in and then this water should get warmer because of the factor that the water, cold water coming in is at a slow rate. I'll also have to put more aer aeration in here. I just won't have to feed them as much since it doesn't have as much filtration, but it's gonna have a constant feed of fresh water coming in and then going out into the system. So that'll be the benefit of that. So basically what I have to do is take this pipe out, cut it, and then put a, what I wanna do is put a coupler on the one spot. So I have basically what I'm gonna be using is some stuff I just have, have lying around luckily is these pieces and then a clear piece. So after I take this pipe off, I need to cut it to the right thing. I'll put this coupler right here and then put a piece of clear pipe here. I will cover that clear pipe with this insulation stuff so that algae doesn't really build up into it. And then I just gotta pull it off to look at it. And then basically after I put this guy there, you'll see in the video, but after I put this guy here, I'm gonna stick this union oops, right here and the idea that I want to have the union here is so if I wanted, I can always take off the bottom part and clean it off if I need. That makes it easier. Also, if I just want the water splashed in there, I can do that. I do plan to do some venturia effect on this piping later on, so that's why I have it all the way at the bottom. But if I just want splashing going into there, which I could do without having the clear pipe. Like if I wanted the simplest, what I'll do is I can just cut it there and just have it splashed into the system, and then I can just see how much is going into the system like that. But also this pipe does give support to the overall structure. You can see it's holding up there. But that's basically how that's gonna go. So that's what I'm gonna do. So the first step is to take off this pipe so I can cut it. The nice thing is I have these valves on here which is for adjusting the flow coming into here. But I can also shut it off so I can do some work on this part of it. And all of this is not glued from here. So like from here on, it's not glued. From there on, it is all glued. As you can see, it is dripping a little. Which should go straight into there. But yeah, to take this off, all I gotta do is smack that. Oh, I think first gotta turn it off actually. <laughs> And then voila. So now that I have this pipe detached, all I gotta do is draw some lines, cut it, and then I'm all done. Well, then I gotta stick the heater in here, run an extension cord, put the heater up somewhere, and heat it up slowly. I don't wanna put it all the way to the top right now. Probably adjust maybe by like, first set it to go up five degrees or something. But right now it is, where my thermometer go? It's like, 56 or something? No. Right here. Can't see. About 60 actually. What I used to cut my PVC is this janky saw right here. Need to get a new one since it cuts slightly crooked, but it does the job, which is nice. You don't need to see me cut it since it's very simple, so I'll cut that and then put the stuff together. But just wanted to show you the saw, which makes it easy. Well, I got that all hooked up now. I didn't take into account this piece right here. So I kind of put this in the wrong spot, but it's whatever, it works for now. You can always change it up later. But I got that clear piece. I do have water going through there, which is hard to see on camera. Kind of see it right there. So I'll put a heater down there. It's kind of dark now, but. So here's the heater I'm using. It is 800 watts, a titanium heater, or whatever they call it. Yeah, it's just right there. Titanium, 800 watts. It's got this nice plastic case around it. It is pretty good. I've used it inside an aquarium, inside my room. And then plus out here once. I also have this controller, which adjusts the temperature which is very handy. So I will be using that, sticking it in there. So we'll see, right now my temperature in the water is like around 60. So I might just set it at like, yeah, 68 or 
right around there or something just to bring it up and see if it actually does something. It might not do much. Well, no, it should do much because it emits, emits all its heat until the thermometer reads that it's the right temperature, so. It should work. We'll see, I'll come and check it later today because I don't want it running all, I don't want this thing running 24 seven, otherwise it uses too much electricity. So everything's done on this tank right here. I still do need to insulate all the tanks better later on. It's just kind of confusing how to do this section right here. I should have done it before I had the plumbing on there and then just drilled through, say either this insulation or this kind of insulation, but I'll get to that. Also here, I'll just probably have to shove some stuff in here which will also insulate it better and regulate the temperature more also during the summer as well as during the winter. So that during the winter, it will be able to keep warmer with less heating basically. Well, I'm not gonna heat the system. It's only if I have tilapia in here. The plan would be to move them out of here pretty much into my room or we'll see. But anyway, that's all set up. I have that in there. There's slight, some water dripping slowly into here. I have an, little bubbles going on in there or an aerator just to supply some more oxygen into the system since there's not as much flow coming into here but that's dripping in here coming out of here and into the rest of the aquaponic system i have the heater set up right here with its temperature controller and then the heater goes down into the bottom over there so the water did get stirred up after i added this air diffuser in here just stirred up all the water so it should clear up slowly as this water trickles through here. So that's giving them fresh water. But that's pretty much that. This is just ensuring that they survive through the winter. And here I might move them later on out of this tank if I set up one in my room, but we'll see how that goes. That's still a process. Since one of the tanks I need to repair and then I need to figure out how I want to do the filtration on them basically. Well, I could stick the tank in there and just set up a temporary filtration, which I might do, but we'll see. So far so good. So the temperature was like below 60. Right now it is right at 70, which is good enough for them. So they can survive like in 60, but if it drops too low below 60, it's not beneficial. See, it's right there at 70. It was below 60 before. So I just want to ensure they don't die. The tilapia might be fine, but primarily those plecos that I have, they probably won't survive. I don't want to risk it again. Well, that pretty much sums up this video, just showing you what I'm doing to ensure the survival of the tilapia that I have in this tank behind me right there. I have primary red Nile tilapia, some blue tilapia, I think like one Mozambique tilapia. I had some fish losses throughout the time. So like in an aquaponic system, one of the biggest struggles would be taking care of the fish. You'll lose a lot of them throughout the time if you're unlucky like me. For some reason, even though my water tests good, I've lost plenty of bluegill and stuff. This year, maybe I've lost like, what, 10, 15, something like that. Just around like this time, like last month primarily. What is that, October? So right now I haven't lost any, but last month I lost some bluegill, which is strange, it's supposed to be hardy fish. My water tests good, so I'm betting on temperature fluctuations, but I haven't been spending enough time to really monitor that and check it so often. But otherwise, this video was just showing you the tilapia in my system. If you do have any questions, remember to leave this below. Below, also if you have ideas on videos you want me to see, want to see me make, also leave this below and I can do those as well. I have some things that I'm planning that I just have to get to. Otherwise, kind of running out of ideas as well. So if you do have something, appreciate it if you leave it below. Otherwise, thank you for watching.